This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to look at managing launch demons and launch agents. To start off with, bring up your man page in the terminal for launchd.plist. Reading through this carefully, we will see that there is a list of keys that we can put into an XML property list. And if you scroll to the bottom, you will get an example of a launch D item properly formatted with the minimum keys that you need. You need a label, a program argument, and a keep alive. If you have those three values plus all the other proper formatting, you have a proper launch D item. So when I'm creating an item from scratch, as we are right now, I tend to copy those lines and put my new information in place of their example information. So we're going to say nano, and we want this to be our own launch agent. So we're going to go into library, launch agents, and we're going to create a file called com.tarny.console.plist. Okay. That reverse DNS notation is very common when creating property lists. I'm going to paste my lines that I copied from the man page in here. Do a little bit of cleanup on the lines to move them over to the left. Okay, what we need to do now is change the label to match our file name. Then we also need program arguments. And for this, I need to put in the path to the application that I want to run, the console application in this case. So I'm going to go into Applications, Utilities, find the console app. And then I don't need just the console app itself. What I need is the binary file for that. So I'm going to go into the Show Package Contents, Contents, and Mac OS X and find the console, drag it down here, and it will type in the path name for me. There will be one extra space there at the end that I don't really need. And then for the keep alive, I want it to be true. So we're going to exit out of there, save the changes, and now we need to load that launch agent for it to take action. If I were to log out and log back in, it should load, or if I were to reboot my computer, but we can explicitly tell it to load right now with launch control. That's launch CTL. And then we tell it to load. And we give it the path and file name. And if we look here in the background, notice that console has started up right away. So I'm going to take my terminal window and make it kind of small. Put it down here at the bottom. Let's take that launch control command instead of loading let's unload and you notice that the console application went away it quit so load unload let's see what happens if I load it and try to quit it normally it goes away and then it comes back it may take it a moment so that is a way that Mac OS X manages background daemon processes. It would be unusual to manage a application like console this way. I'm just using it as an example. But most of your system items that are important to be running in the background are going to be launched with a launch item, either a launch daemon or a launch agent. Now that you know what it can do, let's go into our man page for launch D and look at some of the information that's there. Again, we want to scroll to the bottom. Down here in the Files section, we have a very good summary of the difference between launch agents and launch demons and their different locations. So first of all, we created a launch agent, and launch agents are typically going to run only when there is a user logged in. In other words, there's a user session. You can have multiple user launch agents running at one time if there are multiple users logged in, say with fast user switching or something like that. There are three different locations for launch agents. You can have them in the home folder, such as the one we created, or they can be on the computer library launch agents, or they can be Apple 
library launch agents inside of the system library launch agents. Again, it doesn't matter where they are, they only take effect when a user logs in. Their scope of when they take effect is based on where they are. So if it's in my home folder, then it's only going to work when I log in. If it's in the library launch agents folder or the system library launch agents folder, it's going to take effect anytime any user logs in. Launch daemons are a little different. They start up when the computer system boots and they run in the background and stay running usually as long as their conditions for running and operating are met. They have no need of a user to be logged in for the launch daemon process to work. So let's go into Apple's system library launch agents and launch daemons and take a really quick look at what Apple provides us because there's a lot. And the way I'm going to do this is use the open command and say system library launch star and that's going to open both of those finder windows for me at the same time. I'll switch into the list view so that we can kind of see them both at the same time and get rid of the terminal. So you see there are many items that Apple provides automatically. There are things that deal with, say, the application address book in the launch agents, which sort of makes sense. That's a user type process. And there are things in the launch daemons like font worker, font mover. Those are system wide type operations and need to be run in the background. So, for troubleshooting purposes, these items inside of system library launch agents and system library launch daemons are pretty much hands off. You don't want to remove them. You don't want to go in and change values in them. Those are Apple's items. Inside of the library launch agents and library launch daemons, we have a different story. Their third party applications may have put things in there. So if you find something in there, like in launch daemons like this, that's obviously been installed by a third-party system or we created it ourselves. Typically this folder will be empty unless an application has come along and installed a launch daemon. So there you have it in a very quick nutshell, the information about launch agents and launch daemons with an example. There is many more parameters and options. You can read through the launchd.plist man page to find them. There are many tutorials on the internet. And Apple's developer site has good documentation on LaunchD as well.